In this video, I will be talking about the strategic design pattern. First, let's understand what is the problem that it will solve. For example, if you are having a situation where the functionality of an object will change at the runtime, then we can use this strategy design pattern. Let's take an example. For example, if I'm talking about an shopping website where user comes and he will click on the payment button. On the payment button, he will see that there are few more options. You can pay by using your card, you can pay by using some scan functionality, or you can also use some PayPal or some third party functionality over there. So ultimately for client, it is in payment, but the functionality of this payment can change at the runtime. For example, this card may have some functionalities that is not there in that scan payment. Ultimately, we are making the payment, but the way of making that payment have different functionalities, right? So this different functionality is called a behavior. For example, if PayPal has something that is not there in the scan functionality, then we call it an behavior of the PayPal button. If we are having something in the payment, for example, we have to generate an QR, then this is the behavior only of that scan functionality right similarly if i talk about some different examples and this is a very popular example of ducks so for example if i'm working on a duck application where there are so many ducks we are having some rubber ducks we are having some mallard ducks and we are having some red hat ducks also ultimately we are having some ducks some of the functionalities of these ducks are common for example they all can swim but their behavior could be different some of them may fly some of them may not fly so these are some functionalities that is specific to that particular duck right and the situation is that these functionalities can change at the runtime so for example if i'm talking about a rubber duck just assume that by default this duck cannot speak but at the runtime i may decide that this duck wants to speak so i can change its behavior at that runtime right so this is all about the strategy design pattern if you are having some logic some algorithm that you can define as a behavior somewhere in your application but you can change those behavior at the runtime for the specific class that is called the strategy design pattern now let's not focus on the theory of this design pattern let's come directly on the implementation and here i will be using the dotnet core to implement this design pattern i will be using the dotnet core 9 and the console application so let's create a new console application by using the dotnet cli here i'm writing this dotnet new console here i have created this basic console application and let's go directly inside this folder open it in the vs code you can use any other editor of your choice so everything is fine over here so let's get that duck class first of all over here so here i'm writing this duck.cs and in that duck.cs i can write some implementations so first of all let's write some namespace also over here and the namespace is going to be this strategy design pattern so for example here i have created this duck class and in this duck class we have few methods one is this quack swim display and the fly so by default if i am having my implementation like this then ultimately in future this will create a problem why this will create a problem so let's create some child class also over here so for example first i'm going to create one more class over here and this is going to be mallard duck dot cs so by default i'm having this mallard duck and i am inheriting it from this main duck class but this is the default implementation let's not focus on this one so i'm gonna make it abstract class okay why i'm gonna make it abstract class because ultimately the duck is defined in these child classes this is the mallard duck and I'm, I'm gonna define one more duck which is going to be the rubber duck so ultimately the functionality is written in this mallard duck but some of the functionalities will be there in this main duck class for example this swim because all the ducks can swim so i'm gonna define that over here now we have some functionalities which are specific to the child class so for example this display in this display i want to define the name of my that particular duck so i cannot write that in my parent class so i'm gonna make it an abstract method and let's just remove this implementation because this is something that we will define in the child class so if i go to this child class here i can override this display so it will say that i am the mallard duck now we are having these two functionalities also this is the quack and this is the fly so this is something that can change at the runtime so for example we are having this first duck which is the mallard duck so we can say that it can fly and it can speak but i'm having one more duck which is of rubber type so that rubber duck neither it can fly nor it can speak so again in that case to handle that situation i can simply define my methods over here like this that only the fly and the swim and i can implement them in my child class but i want to change that functionality at the runtime also so for example if my 
my rubber duck class, I'm defining that this duck cannot speak. But at the runtime, if I want to change the functionality for the rubber duck that this can speak. So how to do that? There will be so many complex scenarios in that case. So to handle all these problems, we will first figure out what are the behavior. So this quack and fly, these are the behavior that can change. The swim, although it is also a behavior, but this is something that is always common and it will never change. This is what we are assuming over here. So I'm going to remove the implementation of this quack and the fly behavior and I will define them somewhere in this application. So for that, let's get another folder. So this is a folder behavior and inside this folder, I'm going to create first interface. So this is I fly behavior. So here I am having this fly behavior interface and this is the method that I have written over here. Now let's implement this behavior. So either we can create separate classes or we can define that over here also. So first implementation is going to be that this public class fly with wings. This is going to inherit this I fly behavior. Let's fix these naming conventions because sometimes this copilot write all these things and it creates problem. So this is the first behavior implementation that I'm having. Let's define one more over here and this time I will define that it cannot fly, no fly behavior. So this is one behavior and there are two implementations as of now over here. Now let's define one more behavior which is going to be the speaking behavior or we can say simply the quack behavior. So this is another behavior with name quack and it has only one single uh, method which is going to be the quack. Now let's implement first class which is going to be this quack and the method name and the class name they should be different. So first. Let's do it like this. So I'm going to make it Q U K here also. Quack, quack. This is how it can speak. Now let's get one more class over here and this one will not speak. So this is again the implementation of this separate behavior. So here I'm writing this muted and this one cannot speak. So what we have done, we have created two behavior and both the behaviors have two implementations. There could be more than two implementations also, or you can also have more than two behaviors. Now let's go back to a duck class over here. So here we are having two methods, quack and the fly. Let's put them together. And ultimately this implementation will be decided at the runtime. So here we will be using the interface. So if I go to this uh, quack behavior, so here we are quack dot. What is the method name? This is the method name. For this duck class, it doesn't matter which class is going to implement this I fly behavior. Ultimately, there is an quack method and whoever will implement that, the child class will provide this implementation. And in that quack method, we will get that output over here. Similarly, let's define this fly behavior also. So here I'm writing this fly behavior dot fly. Now we have defined these two things. Okay, so if I go to the child class, so for example, if I'm going to this mallard duck, now this time here I have to define what is the object type of that I fly behavior. So let's create a new uh, constructor over here. And in that constructor, I'm defining that this fly behavior has the instance of fly with wings. It means this mallard duck can fly with wings and quack behavior is this can speak quack quack. Now let's create one more class over here with name rubber duck. So here let's create quickly one more class. And in that rubber duck also I can inherit it from that duck and implementations will be similar. So let's go back to this mallard duck, copy everything from there and come back here and let's just paste it. So the constructor name will be equal to the class name. So that's what we are having. And here I can define the fly behavior. So for example, I'm writing that this cannot fly. So this is no fly. So go back over here and here I'm defining this no fly. And what is the quack behavior? Let's say this is muted. Now let's just understand what all things we have done over here. So we are having a duck class. We have created it as an abstract class. Why we are doing that? Because ultimately there will be some child classes that will implement this duck class and they are our main class, right? But some of the code is common. For example, this swim method is common. So I have defined that over here. Now there are some functionalities that are specific to each class and the implementation is also different, but this functionality must be there. So for example, this display. So this display is something that will display what is the name of that rubber. We cannot have the implementation in the parent class because it depends on that child class. So for that, I have written it as an abstract. So ultimately the child class will implement it. Now talking about this quack and the fly. So this is something that can change at the runtime and there are more than one fly behavior and there are more than one quack, quack behavior. How we are defining that? So we are using this interface for that and these interfaces having some implementation somewhere. So right now we are having only two implementations, but tomorrow if we are having more than two, then there is no change in this class. Here let's get the instance of one of the duck class. So here I'm writing this duck and for example, first I want to work with this mallard duck. So in this mallard duck, you can notice that we are having few methods. 
first one is this display method quack and the swim now i have defined both of them at this place if now i will try to run this application then let's see what will happen so here i'm gonna run this dotnet run command and we will see what is the output so here i'm in this program.cs file and at this place you can notice that we are getting some output at this place so what is the output so for this first mallard duck we are having four methods this is going to be display fly quack and swim from this display method we are getting this message that this is the real mallard duck then the fly method and then this quack method and then this swim method then we are having these four output from this duck and here you can notice that in the fly we are having this message that i cannot fly and in this quack we are having this message that i cannot speak but as per this strategy design pattern we should be able to change this behavior at the runtime what does that mean and how can we do that so it means for example if i talk about this mallard duck right now you can notice that it can fly but i want to implement this functionality that i can change this behavior over here right so maybe at this line it can fly but at the next line i don't want it to be fly i want this behavior to be changed at the runtime similarly for this quack so maybe this can speak at this time but i want it to be muted in the next line so this is kind of change of the behavior at the runtime how can we do that so first let's go to this duck class and here you can notice that we are having this implementation of this quack and fly based on these interfaces right now if i just increase more space over here now if i go to this mallard duck here you can notice that we are setting this object like this we are creating the instance of this fly with wings and the quack so we have to change this dynamically and let's do that and then we'll talk about what is the use case of that method so here i'm having this public void set fly behavior and let's have one more this is going to be set quack behavior okay so in this set fly behavior what i'm doing is i am setting a new value to this fly behavior and in this set quack behavior i am setting some new value to this i quack behavior so it means i am changing the implementation over the object of these interfaces at the runtime now in my program.cs class if i want to change the behavior then i can call these methods wherever it is required and i can change the behavior so for example if for this uh, mallard duck let's say here i want to change its behavior of flying right now you can see that it can fly but but i don't want it to fly by using this mallard duck i can set its behavior set fly behavior so right now you can notice the default one is that it can fly but now i'm changing it to no fly now if i will call this fly method then you will notice that the output would be that it cannot fly so let's just comment this rubber one for some time because let's focus on this concept i hope you are getting it and let's run this application again and see what will happen this time so at this place you can notice that the default functionality is that it can fly and it can say quack quack but here we are changing the behavior of this mallard duck and now you can see that the same method is saying us that it cannot fly so it means we are changing this functionality at the runtime similarly you can also change this behavior of the speaking how can we do that so mallard duck dot set quack behavior and this time if let's say by default it is speaking and now we can call another method which is going to be muted so now you can notice that we are changing two behavior of this object at the runtime we can do similar step for this rubber duck also and the best part is that tomorrow if you need to implement more behaviors and more child classes then it is super easy to do that thank you so much for watching this video till end if you have any questions suggestion or feedback please feel free to share everything in the comment section below i love to read your comments and i will see you in the next video thank you for watching have a great day